Hey guys, Billy here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Rhapsody of Fire, Glory for Salvation on November 26 on AFM Records. The album has 13 tracks, 66 minutes in length, and this is the band's 13 full length studio album. They are an Italian symphonic power metal band. This is a concept album, is the second chapter in a trilogy that started with the Eighth Mountain. So that is gonna have a deep impact on how this album is built, how it sounds, the atmosphere, and obviously the lyrical content. As far as the design of this record, the album has enough nuances, enough ebbs and flows to allow this album to feel a little bit more dynamic than what it really is. It's an album that has a sense of continuity, but not necessarily from track to track. It's very balanced, it builds a road ahead so you know exactly where your starting point is and where the finishing line is going to be. From that perspective alone, the album comes across really compact, really well, really well defined as far as the structure goes. And this has a positive impact in the overall experience that you're gonna get from the record. Now, once you get into the sound, the best word to describe the overall experience of listening to this record is cinematic. This is a very cinematic record. It feels like a movie score in terms of how it comes across the lyrical content, the sound itself, the atmosphere that that sound creates. There's no better word to define this record than that specific one because it really encompasses everything that this album is all about. Big sound, big volume, really stretching out, making the songs feel and sound as big as possible uh, consistently from one track to the next. That is pretty much the spinal cord of the entire existence of this record. Now within the sound, you're obviously gonna have some nuances. There are some folk elements on this record, but I really felt that that cinematic drive had such an impact on the overall experience that when you reach the end of the record, those folk elements that help define certain moments within the story don't really go beyond that. It, they don't have a lasting memory as far as the listener is concerned. And when you define the sound on this album, you have to define it into two camps. There is this camp of creating pillars that define the overall experience, that create the songs, that give the songs life, the motor, their own existence, if you will. And then there is the camp of the elements that have more of a secondary role, complementing the sound, allowing the experience to be a little bit more robust. On the first camp, you have the keyboards, orchestrations, vocals. These two elements, because I put the keyboards and orchestrations as one, and then you have the vocals, these two become the pillars, the cornerstones of this entire album. They drive the experience. They are the experience as far as the sound is concerned. This album relies heavily on the symphonic side, on the keyboards, to not just only create movement within the songs, but to create ebbs and flows, adding melody, creating atmosphere, uh, uh, expanding the songs, making them bigger, introducing that cinematic essence that this record holds. All of that really comes from what the keyboards and orchestrations together are doing song in and song out. They become almost the be all and end all of this record with the exception being the vocals because the vocals are really neck and neck in terms of clearing a path for themselves and standing above everything else and pushing this record forward. The vocals are phenomenal. Voli is absolutely incredible. I wasn't expecting anything else. He has an incredible range and I really felt like he was on full display throughout this entire album. I also enjoyed a lot of the backing vocals, a lot of the layers, the choirs coming in, really helping to create substance, really helping to create volume and heaviness without necessarily having to do too much as far as his range is concerned. He can stay within the pocket, he can do what he does best, he can elevate the tracks, he can bring the mood down, and when you need something a little bit more robust, something a little bit bigger, something a little bit thicker, you can rely on having backing vocals or choirs in order to do that and not change anything else and not change the dynamics of the record or the dynamics of the vocal tracks, period. Now on that secondary camp, you have the guitars and drums. Both of them felt, in my opinion, a little bit deflated. The experience that they give this record is not a consistent one, or perhaps it is a consistent one, it's just not as strong as it could have been. They really feel subjugated to the second role, to the secondary role, and they feel like they're driving underneath the vocals and underneath the keyboards. The keyboards sit on top, the volume that they have, the presence that they have in the mix really becomes apparent and predominant from beginning to end, and you see the guitars and drums fall into this secondary role that allows the sound to be compact, that allows the sound to have a sense of, of life in it, but it feels very thin. The drums don't have the necessary heaviness 
to really ground the record. So because of the symphonic elements pushing that cinematic aroma throughout the entire album, the record always feels like it's levitating. The vocals are doing a little bit of the same, even though the backing vocals and choir is really grounded ever so slightly. But the drums could have grounded the album a little bit better, could have made the album feel a little bit more robust, a little bit more thunderous, would have zero negative impact on the cinematic aspect of the album, if anything would actually make the album feel more epic. So I wish it was there. Uh, you could hear it, but you could hear it very sporadically at parts throughout the entire album, not necessarily very consistent in order to really have a predominant role or at least a role on par with the keyboards, orchestrations and vocals. Same could be said for the guitars outside of the solos and the solos on this album are really well done. I enjoyed the, what they brought to the songs. I enjoyed the, the brightness that they gave to the tracks. I enjoyed the, the life that they brought in. I enjoyed how they completed the songs, in some cases really expanding the tracks, making them feel a little bit more complete, a little bit bigger. So from a solo perspective, this album is phenomenal. But outside of the solos, the guitars felt a little bit lackluster. Not that they're not there, not that they don't have drive, not that they don't have power. It just feels a little bit suffocated by those keyboards, by those orchestrations, and by the vocals as well. So I wanted the drums and guitars to have a little bit more strength, to add a little bit more power, would make the overall album sound even bigger, even better, even more cinematic, because it would feel very robust across every single part that it holds. And right now, there's a little bit of two camps, the ones that sit in the forefront and the ones that hold all the weight in the background. Because of that, I feel like this album falls a little bit flat at times. It feels a little bit tedious and even repetitive. There's certain songs, while not necessarily sounding the same, are using the same elements in the same fashion. So it starts to feel like you've heard these songs before. It starts to feel like the journey is repeating itself and you're not necessarily moving forward. You're just standing still. Now, as far as favorite tracks on this record, I want to start off with Son of Vengeance. This is the opening track. A really interesting opening track, a track that has a lot of great elements to it because it sets not only the expectations for itself as a song, but it really sets the tone and mood for what the rest of the album is going to be all about. Musically and vocally, everything that you're going to get throughout the entire record is pretty much together in one single song, and that song is Son of Vengeance, the track that opens this record. Incredible vocals on this track. You see those backing vocals working as choirs in order to create a little bit more substance. It helps elevate not just the sound, but the atmosphere of the song as well. Sound, vocals really working well together, uh, really working off of each other. And then Voli is absolutely phenomenal. He puts uh, all the right nuances within this track. He creates all the ebbs and flows that this track needs. Not to say that they don't exist musically, but vocally I really felt that he created the breaks within the song to make this track feel a lot more dynamic. The solo is phenomenal. The solo breaks up the track, it breaks the routine of the song, it expands the track, but at the same time it really makes it feel complete. Without it, it wouldn't have worked. Next you have The Kingdom of Ice. Uh, the verses are more driven, more melodic. The chorus comes in with a little bit more power. I felt that it had a little bit extra heaviness and that is a nice change because a lot of the songs uh, tend to follow a different parameter which is a little bit more driven heaviness uh, in the verses, a little bit more melodic in the chorus. This song kind of changes a little bit from what we saw in Son of Vengeance and, and it changes its parameters but it works really well. It works well musically, it works well vocally. The backing vocals once again on this track add power, they add substance, they add volume to make the song feel slightly heavier without having to change too much vocally, without really having to uh, uh, change how you're going to perceive overall the vocals across this entire track. And they expand the sound and that is an important element to make the song feel more dynamic or as dynamic as possible. Once again, the solo section on this track is phenomenal. It makes the song feel whole and allows the track to have a lot of life, a lot of energy, but still stay contained at the same time. Last but not least, Made of the Secret Sand, a song that has a little bit more of a guitar push. One of the few tracks on this album that you really feel the guitars at times, not necessarily uh, consistently, but at times, coming a little bit more into the forefront, adding a little bit more intensity into the overall design, into the overall construction of the track. You still feel like the song has a heavy usage of that symphonic drive, of those symphonic elements of the orchestrations of the keyboards that really push this track forward, that allows the song to have uh, the atmosphere that it does 
but the guitars on this track feel felt to me that they had a little bit more of an impact, a direct impact on how you're gonna perceive it. The drums help as well, they jump in a little bit more, creating a little bit more of a substantial sound that pushes the song, becoming more of a motor, something that it's not necessarily also consistent throughout the entire record, but on this song works really well. So you see the two elements that pretty much throughout the entire album have more of a secondary role on this track. They don't necessarily have a primary role, but they have somewhere in between. They're not necessarily in the back seat, they're not necessarily driving the song, they're perhaps on the passenger side. And that makes the track overall feel a little bit more impactful. It changes the dynamics of this track and makes this song stand out from the pack. And that's an important element when you're going through an entire album. You need certain songs that change the perception that you have of the record, that give you those peaks that make the album feel like it's coming to life, that it's having a jolt of energy. This song does that throughout this entire album because it has the same elements but packaged in a different way. This is it, Rhapsody of Fire, Glory for Salvation, out November 26th on AFM Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.